Hello, hello. Today we're going to be creating some spooky doodles in a Strathmore Mixed Media Visual Journal, as well as Strathmore 400 Series Mixed Media Pads cut into small squares. We're going to be using Princeton Mini Detailer brushes in a shader, angle shader, spotter, monogram brush, fan brush, and a round. You're also going to need my Mary Gouache in the colors Brilliant Orange, Scarlet, Lemon Yellow, Sky Blue, Sap Green, Sepia, Black, and White. And these are just some of my reference doodles that I did beforehand, so I have something to go off of. First, we're going to start with a tombstone. Here I'm mixing black and white to make a darker gray for the side of the tombstone and a lighter gray for the face of the tombstone. I'm going to be using a shader brush to help cover a little bit more area. So we're going to start with a sort of C shape for the outer edge of the tombstone. And you can make the size of this as thick as you want it. Now I'm going to do the front of the tombstone with a lighter gray. It's going to be kind of a half oval shape to create the face of the tombstone. Now I'm going to mix together yellow, sap green, and some sepia to make the perfect shade of grass that I want. Then I'm going to take the fan brush. It's really great for textures, grasses, furs, and small details like that. I'm going to put just a tiny bit of the paint on there and then kind of do an up and down motion to create little blades of grass at the bottom of the tombstone. Now I'm going to use the round brush with a little bit of black on it. To write RIP on the face of the tombstone. This tiny little round brush is perfect for very small details and for writing tiny words. I love how small it is and how pointed the tip is. And that's it for a spooky little gravestone. Next we're going to make some cute little candy corn. I'm just sketching out the outline here so I have a base to go off of so I don't make them into a weird shape. So first I'm going to start mixing all of my colors. I'm making like a darker orange for the base a yellowy white for the middle and then a yellowy mostly yellow orange for the top i'm going to be using the shader brush again to cover most of the space so we'll start with the dark orange for the base of the candy corn and i'm going to make the left candy corn base a little bit darker than the right one just because the right one is sitting on top of it so you can kind of tell the difference between the two Then I'm going to go in with the yellowy orange for the top of the candy corns. 
and then fill in the middle last with the yellow tinted white. doing some touch-ups so that left one is a little bit darker and that is it for some adorable candy corn next we're gonna make an easy little spider so once again we're gonna use the shader for the body of the spider I'm just using some black and white mixed together mostly black just create a circle for the body and then fill it in Next, I'm using the monogram brush to create the spider legs. So get some black on there and then go in outward motion so you can create a very thin little line. You can make the legs as thick as you want. I'm gonna go over it one more time because that's pretty thin. And then give your spider eight little legs. Next, I'm using the spotter brush to create the eyes of the spider. So I'm going to take white first and create the whites of the eyes. And then add a gray pupil, or a gray part of the eye, and then add a black pupil on top of that gray. And that's it. A cute little spider. Next we'll be painting a pumpkin. Here I'm just drawing the outline of the pumpkin again so I have something to fill in so I'm not just freehanding it. And I'm gonna mix together some of the brilliant orange, the lemon yellow, and sepia to make a more earthy looking orange for the pumpkin. So I'm going to start with a mostly orange for the base of the pumpkin because I'm going to add in some behind layers with the darker orange. So fill in the front parts of your pumpkin with your brilliant orange, lemon yellow, a little bit of sepia combination. Then I'm going to take the little bit of darker orange to create those back layers of the pumpkin to give it a little bit of depth. Then I'm mixing some more sepia in with the brilliant orange to create the color for the stem. Now I'm taking the round brush and using that same stem color to add in some detailing on the pumpkin so you can see where each little part of the pumpkin round is. And ta-da! You have a fall pumpkin. Next, let's make a witch's hat. I'm mixing together some black and white to make a dark gray and then adding more black to that to create a darker gray for the brim of the hat. I'm gonna start out with the shader brush and create the top part of the hat first. So I'm giving it a little point at the tip and then I'll fill in the top of the hat as I go. Next, I'll do the brim of the hat with a darker gray, doing a circular shape to create the brim, and then I will fill that in with the shader brush as well with the dark gray. Here I'm just adding some more gray to the top of the hat because it wasn't as dark and filled in as I would like. 
Next, let's add a little buckle to the hat for some detailing. I'm taking some white with a teeny bit of gray. And then I'm just gonna create like a band around the top part of the hat for the buckle. Then I'm gonna take some orange with the shader brush as well and create the buckle itself. And last but not least, I'm going to take black to add the final detailing in a little square. I'm just adding some finishing touches, making sure the brim is straight and even. have it, a witch's hat. Next up is a witch's cauldron. Ooh. I'm doing another outline. Since a cauldron's kind of a weird shape, I don't want to just freehand that. Then I am grabbing the shader brush. I'll be using a gray mixture that I made with black and white, a little bit of blue. So just fill in your outline with that whole color to create the cauldron. Then I'm using a spotter brush and a yellow and sap green combination to add some bubbles coming out of the cauldron. The spotter brush is great for little details like tiny circles and dots. It has a really nice fine point. And there you have it, a witch's cauldron. And of course, we have to make a beautiful fall leaf. So I'm starting with a quick little sketch of a maple leaf, making it kind of spiky. And then I'm gonna start with the shader brush, of course, and I'm gonna use kind of a mixture of the brilliant orange scarlet, lemon yellow, but first I'm starting out with a mostly brilliant orange color just to kind of put down a base level. And as I'm going, I'm going to start mixing in some yellows mixed with the brilliant orange. Kind of just put the colors wherever you want. I didn't really have a process for this. I basically just added reds and yellows and oranges together. And now I'm adding some veins and a stem with scarlet. The shader brush is great for filling in areas, but also it has a nice point, so you can add thin lines like that easily. You can do a lot with a shader brush when it's this tiny. And there's a beautiful, vibrant fall leaf. All right, next let's make a spooky little bat. I'm drawing my outline once again, it just makes it easier to fill it in. Make sure you give the bottom some little points and curves. I'm going to start with the shader brush because it's the easiest to fill in the most space with. And I mix together a little bit of white and black so it's not just straight black, but it's mostly black. This one's super simple. Follow your outline and fill it in. If you want to get fancy, you can add some purples or some blues, whatever colors you want to add to your black to give it a little bit more depth. And here 
here I'm just going back and making sure that the curves and points are a little bit more pronounced to make it look better. And that's it, there's your spooky bat. Alright, and last but not least, let's make a not so spooky ghost. I'm mixing together the sky blue with some white to kind of create a bluish white for the ghost. And I'm starting with the shader brush. I'm going to kind of do like a rounded top and then the bottom of the ghost is going to have three little curves. Here I'm just filling it in with that blue color. Next, I'm going to draw a cute little trick-or-treating bag with some sepia. I'm using the round brush for this so I can kind of create a jagged top to the brown paper bag. The round brush isn't great for filling in spaces, but it's great for creating thin outlines and small details. Now I'm taking my shader brush again to fill this in because it's much faster than using the round brush. There I just took the round brush again to kind of tweak some of the details of the bag. Now I'm taking the shader brush and some black mixed with a little bit of the sky blue to create his eyes and mouth. Two little ovals and then a small circle for the mouth. Next, we're going to go back to the round brush and add in the word boo on his trick-or-treating bag with some black. The super fine point of the round brush is great for doing these tiny little letters. there you have it, a not so spooky ghost. So now you've created nine spooky doodles. If you create your own, we'd love to see you share them with us. You can post it on Facebook or Instagram and tag us at Princeton Brush. Happy Halloween creatives.